What's up everybody? Brett here and we're back playing some more Kingdom Rush Origins. So before we get started I want to say that I was about 10 minutes into recording uh, just a second ago and unfortunately the game crashed on me. So I mean aside from that being unfortunate and a small waste of my time um, really all I did was kind of ruin a bit of a surprise for me and some of the uh, chances for you guys to hear my first impressions. Kind of like my first impressions. I guess I've done all these levels before. It's just been years and years and I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember these these in particular. But anyway, I was in the process of setting up stuff. And we were on like the first or second wave of this map. Uh, but So for me, if I sound a little unenthused for a moment, you know, don't worry about it. It's just because I just did this a minute ago. Uh, I went through the process of re-breaking down Lin's character. Um, level 5, we haven't gotten a chance to really use her yet. Uh, can attack four times, dealing true damage and extra damage if the unit is cursed. Um, curses reduce damage and slow movement. We also have weakening curse, so magic resistance and armor is reduced for six seconds. We maxed out Charm of Misfortune so that she can stand and fight and uh, have a great chance of not taking damage. And then Fate Sealed is the ult, uh, which you know is kind of like a damage over time spell that eventually explodes and deals damage in an AoE. And we were going to use her because I felt like it was appropriate uh, for this kind of Dark Elf themed map. And yeah, so let's let's jump into it. It's going to be the Duskwood Outpost. And already I, I, my first impressions were that this was going to be a pretty tactical and fun map. So it says, General, we must advance without delay to the Twilight Elf's capital. Melissa's last loyal lieutenant is preparing a terrible and powerful spell that will destroy everything in sight. If we don't stop him, this will be the end of the continent. And guys, the reason I tell you about stuff like crashes is because I don't want to be, like, I want to be genuine when it comes to, like, my feelings on things. And I don't want to always be, like, pretending that nothing happens behind the scenes. So, we were so close, he says. The plan was perfect, but this time will be the end of it all. So, kind of a mad with power. I think in the last time I said it was like a, almost like a Sauron, Lord of the Rings type character, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Elf, and uh, yeah, I love the comics. You can you can take a minute just to kind of look in the background and see different things. But uh, yeah, here we go. So he's gonna be the overarching boss. The end is near. I heard her voice for the first time, and it confirmed for me that she was in fact a lady. What do you want, errand boy? Check that out. <laughs> So the Noel comes out. It took me a second to figure out the timing um, in my last try, but like I remembered he's from, uh, he's a character, I think he's from an R.A. Salvatore novel or series of novels. I read one of them when I was younger because I was kind of into like the whole edgy dark elf style fantasy for a minute. I, I read a lot of really good fantasy, um, but that kind of style caught me for, for a little while. And I remember reading one of the books and not being all that impressed, but I know he's um, a kind of a beloved fantasy character. So I think that was an homage to him. He's kind of a dark elf with a black panther that he kind of rolls around with, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to do my best to remember where I had everything and kind of re-talk through um, why I did what. Okay, first thing I did was to identify my uh, defender positions. So having two is pretty basic. There are four entrances here and two exits which is very important to know we have these very powerful central positions i wonder if this does anything i don't know but making use of these central positions is going to be key it's going to it's it's basically what's going to allow us to hit multiple lanes in any given wave and that's pretty important I think I ended up doing something like this. I, I have a tendency sometimes to build a lot of level 1 towers to kind of map out my build. And then as needed, I, I upgrade. Um, and I think that's going to be fine to do here. And I think this is one of the towers I was uh, debating. I think I added that here as well. Um, but this would make a second, a great second defender position. Put another barracks here, upgrade them both, and have a nice defensive you know, like pocket here. That we can uh, can hold, uh, but it also makes a great hunter arbor because once it's upgraded, it'll be able to hit the top lane as well. So it's it's hard to say. 
Okay, these guys are maxed out as far as where they can stand. I'm trying to create lots of little like triangles where we have overlapping fire focused around the uh, the defenders. So our first waves are going to be Twilight Harassers, which are very good at dealing with level 1 barracks characters. So you kind of have to have some heavy DPS to, to back them up. I think I'm going to try it this time with the defenders. I think last time I went with an Archer Tower. But I kind of had regrets about that. I like my 1-2 strategy here. And I think it's going to function pretty well. I also like getting this upgraded pretty soon also. Perhaps to a golden longbow. And we'll see what we can hit when we get a chance to look at the range. I think this is definitely a golden longbow position. They should be able to hit everything. Um, so, yeah, without any further ado, guys, let's jump into it. And it gave us a little info card that I don't think it'll give us again. Uh, and it was about the sleeping trees. So, they had them on kind of the, the mini-map. Get in there, Lynn. Uh, she's got like a really small, like engagement zone which is awful yeah it's not going to give me the info again but basically if i click on this it puts all the nearby enemies to sleep so we're going to use it here and boom now they're asleep and we're going to use our ultimate ability here and is it going to affect these guys no so i guess it has to get the kill but anyway let's nuke them yeah, Lin's engagement zone is very small. She's kind of suffering from some of the same problems. So we want to put this on something it can kill. It seems to have a pretty short cooldown. But yeah, Prince Denas, like if someone's sta not standing right next to him, he doesn't just move and engage. And that's really not great. So we're going to get... As much value as we can. She's leveling up super fast. And we should certainly consider upgrading our barracks unit so that they can actually put up a fight. And if there's any type of air presence, uh, we'll have a chance at getting them. You know, let's just nuke this. I don't, I don't have the power as of yet to deal with that. Let's put these units to sleep. Locking down our stuff. Alright, let's get that longbow. And Lynn's doing great. She's already leveled once. Alright, we want to get... Mm, this is a tricky one. I want to call early, but I want to get a lightning off first. And we're cutting it pretty close. Probably should have used my ult as well. So we have another new enemy, Blood Servants. Fast, gruesome beasts made by the Twilight Elves, created only to seek and destroy. Fast speed and high damage. But how much health do they have? 300? Okay, that's not a lot of health, thankfully. And let's get another Golden Longbow. Uh, we need some help. Need some help. There we go. Let's get those online. Can we reach here? I think we can. That'll work. I'll take it. Summon early so we can get the lightning down. That was pretty clutch. And she goes down again, but she's almost level 7. We've got a lot of gold to spend. He's going to be a problem because he does have that high armor. I guess I need to be making more use of the trees. Let's put him to sleep. Put him to sleep. They have no natural resistance, so you, you really just have to kill them. 
Oh, don't leak, don't leak, don't leak. Come on. Okay, we're going to leak just a little bit. So, for my really, this is my first time trying this map. Uh, not terrible. Certainly need more magic damage, more AoE. To see where the big boy goes. And you know what, I think we need another defender here. We can put them on the side lane. Get in there. And they'll just function to help block up. We can put those units to sleep. And as they kind of pass here at the same time, we'll put them all to sleep as well. Alright, Lynn, get out of there. Yeah, I think we need to really upgrade our AoE capabilities because we are getting crushed here. Hmm. Yeah. I focus too much, I think, on the longbows, which are just decent single target towers, and not enough on trying to rush out like the werewood, let's say. So this is going to be a bit of a failed run, but hey, we did it with a level 5 hero, uh, who I think is perhaps not the best in this particular map. And we can try and play it out, and just get more experience for her. Use our lightning, it's off cooldown. Uh, I guess it, it doesn't affect this area here, it only affects this area and this area. That's good to know. I'd like to get her to level 8 because I think I, I want to retry using her. Pretty tough map. We'll try it again. Need more magic damage and need more AoE. I think is what I've learned. Okay, so let's let's quit and level up Lin's abilities. And we have here. The ult would definitely be great to level. We can do something like that as well. Okay. Let's try again. And we'll use Lin once again. So we're going to shake it up a little bit. Hunting season begins. Let's rock and roll. For the queen. By the light of the moon. Okay. Trust our aim. The end is near. Yeah, I mean, I... We could use Aravan or Aradan here, I think would be a better choice, uh, just having the range. Probably Aravan for the magic damage, and the elemental storm ability is really strong. Let's 
Let's just nuke him and get rid of him. There we go. That should be pretty good when it explodes. Yeah, it did quite a bit of damage. You know, I feel like we need to focus on getting the Werewood. That's kind of what's going through my mind right now. But the Werewood is really only good once you finally get um, its AoE ability. We're going to time this well. He's moving slow, they're moving fast. We'll wait until they kind of overlap. Again, which is nice, but she's just kind of taking a beating here. This one I want to make an arch druid tower. That's perhaps not the best use of my ult. Might be the magic towers here that I need to focus more on upgrading. Uh, we're getting overwhelmed, and I don't think we have what we need to finish them. Alright, let's get her up there. This needs to be an arcane archer. I'm trying to kind of spread out my upgrading, but it, it may be just biting me in the butt. Come on, give me a little bit. There we go. Get the upgrade right at the last second. Man, she, the fact that she barely fights is pretty rough. We could very easily have another hero who just non-stop is attacking and we're missing out on just a ridiculous amount of DPS and some of that might just be a little bit of missed micro from me um, but you have to micro melee heroes so much more It does a little bit. It's just, it's it's so weak compared to other heroes. So she's fun, but I don't know if she's really competitive. In terms of like helping me actually win these, these maps. So we may have to stick with someone else. Sadly. Having our AoE stuff shut down is pretty rough as well, so now all the dogs are going to get through. Man, I really don't have this one figured out. She leveled again, so we can give her, let's just give her another thing of Hex Fury. And let's switch out. Last thing I want to do is, is continuously lose for you guys. I think Aravan's a great choice. I think Wilbur could probably help me get it done as well. And maybe even Aradan. Let's try Aravan. It's been a long time since we've used him. 
He's also an elf, so it fits the theme. Elemental Fury. Because what I'm considering is the fact that the elves, for the most part, some of them are very physical resistant, and the really high-end elves are very magic resistant. So you, you can't really afford to overload on any one thing. And what I need is the ability to clear waves. More scam calls. Getting scam calls all day long now. Hunting season begins. Man. I hate to just keep kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But I feel like it really is. It's got to be one of the best configurations. Time is mana. By the ancient powers. Let's try it out. Could also be a good time to try and make use of perhaps powerful barracks units. Keepers, maybe. But I mean, already, just look at the effectiveness. He's just gonna non stop do his magic damage. And it's gonna be very powerful. Shazam, he says. It's a pretty topical reference at the moment. I never did read too many like Shazam comic books, but I'm excited anytime a cool new superhero like pops up in the movie scene. And I like to reserve judgment on whether or not a movie like that'll be good. I think like most people, I judge the uh, like the Marvel and DC movies on kind of a different scale just because they're meant to be fun and they're not really meant to be like cinematic masterpieces and I just saw Captain Marvel in theaters uh, like two days ago and I, I enjoyed it I had a good time and I honestly I feel at this point like you almost have to watch it or else you're just not gonna know what's going on If you go to watch Endgame, which I think is what everyone's like most excited about. We get some lightning or something going here. So we need Clobber. Clobber is the, the move that makes the Werewood good. It's relatively cheap, it does decent damage, but it stuns. Get him down here. Should have used this before we we summon. We're gonna very quickly need AOE down here. I like getting the Arch Druid down here last time. Some slightly stronger pups. And we shouldn't even place a tower like this if we're not willing to upgrade it quickly. And we're putting our um, our reinforcements in the melee range on purpose. We want to lock them in this position. Um, a lot of times if you're trying to get the most DPS out of your reinforcements, you place them back, right? But if you need them to kind of block... If you need them to kind of block a, a lane for you and to hold enemy units in a singular position, then you put them right on top. So for those of you who play the game, maybe wonder why I'm doing that. That's kind of my thought process there. Because we certainly could be getting a lot more damage out of them. But we need their bodies right now more than we need their DPS. Uh, 
Uh, we could, I guess, invest in there. Also, I haven't really been making use of the sleeping tree, and I kind of realized that. We're on wave 8 now, so we're not doing too bad. We're going to want to move up here. Slow him down a little bit. Nice freeze there from Aravan. My idea was putting a magic tower here and then getting perhaps a longbow here if we have the time and the, and the gold. But we may not. Okay, I'm looking to summon early, but... Yeah, that sucks. Put them to sleep and put him to sleep as well. We need just a little bit of gold here. We can get another kind of backup defensive position. We've almost got lightning. Maybe a little too late. And we're getting run through pretty hard. Come on, come on. Aravan died again while I was focused there, but I don't know what we could have done about that. Okay. We're at 18. That's still three stars if we can manage it. And I've got my eyes on Aravan now. Let's get our first bear. The best thing about our current towers is their ability to, to teleport when it comes to having this number of magic towers. Okay, that's a perfect spot to use our lightning. And we're going to need to use something, our storm there. Come on. Come on, give it to me. Right now. Oh, come on. I could have at the last second moved over here man I still I'm, I guess I'm just lacking more AoE and having to use my lightnings in those bad places makes it so that I'm not getting their full value. And this needs to move. Damn, I don't have it. I really don't. We've got a lightning coming up, but I don't think it's going to be strong enough to, to finish this. I tried to kind of hedge my bets there, but it didn't get the kill. Damn, we're going to leak again. So close. I feel like we were very close to having this under control. I just didn't have enough like AoE control, I guess. Needed needed more perhaps more druids. Or just to spam out the magic towers. Hmm. Let's quit that for now. That's enough times in a row failing. Uh, I'll, I gotta figure it out off camera. I think I'm very close to doing it. I don't want you to think that I'm like super discouraged or anything. I know I can get it done. It's just how many times do I want to fail on camera and waste you guys time. Um, but I think we're closing in on being able to do it. Uh, Aravan was definitely an upgrade, but there was a moment or two there where I was, you know, I let it, my micro slip and he died. And I think they kind of started a snowball effect backwards. Um, also, one or two maybe bad uh, ability uses, just really ineffective, and 
perhaps. See, I think that level is going to require me to spam out one particular type of tower. And that's, that's exactly how I hate playing this game. Um, and for the most part, you can see I don't need to play that way in order to win. Um, but I feel like it wants me to just build maybe a bunch of um, high elven, the mage towers, and just win that way. But I don't really want to do that. That's, that's super unfun to me. So I was thinking here we could go and try and do the Dwaraman Gates. Very Lord of the Rings type level. Uh, I have no illusions. This will probably also be a tough one. But, you know, if we can't get this done right now, and I'll certainly do this off camera and figure it out, and probably stop short of winning just to uh, show you guys the strat. But for right now, let's try the Dwaraman Gates and let's bring a different hero. We haven't used Zen yet, who's basically Chen from Warcraft. Um, I like love Wilbur. He's one of my favorite heroes at the moment. I think we can use him. Or do we want to use like Prince Denas? No, let's use Wilbur. You can be my wingman anytime. And we'll bring him to the Dwaraman gates. So war is over, or so we thought. Because even as our kingdom goes back to its former peace and prosperity, the messengers we sent asking for aid from the dwarves never returned. And if there's something more troublesome than a loud dwarf, it's a silent one. You must travel to their land and seek answers. I love all things dwarves and pretty much any fantasy medium. I said beware of bunnies. To Her Majesty the Queen, a new and mysterious material was found deep into the mountains. But there was something else. An ancient evil of fire and brimstone. Send help before all is lost. So look at these guys. Scary looking troll guys, and then what looks to be a Balrog. You can be my wingman. So we gotta remember that Wilbur is super slow. So wherever, he's not the best in these types of maps, because these types of maps uh, really want you to have mobility. And we have heroes that can teleport. Welcome to the danger zone. If I remember right, was like Frodo around here somewhere? I could be confusing it with another older map. I could have sworn there was some sort of like Lord of the Rings reference in this one. Anyway, guys, all right. Spider Brood and Sword Spider. So we don't want magic damage here. This is going to be um, a physical damage type of lane. This is going to be difficult. Three distinct lanes here, here, and here. And three entrances and three exits. So we need to do our best to make our, you know, triangular or even in this case like a square formation. And we're going to have to probably be constantly microwing our barracks units, if I had to imagine. Forward here. Swift and steady. Mm. It's not the best thing I've ever made, but let's let's call that good. I've reinforced the other areas because I have a good, great feeling uh, Wilbur with reinforcements will be able to hold back spiders. The real question is just how many barracks units do we we need? We may not need very many at all. If we're effective at kind of microwing them. Welcome to the danger zone. Swift and steady. If we keep him in some in like a tight little zone, like here to here, his speed won't be that big of an issue. Ugh, these things are pretty nasty. Wilbur's big butt is in the way. I can't click on him. Uh, but you you guys will certainly remember them. 
And I think Wilbur is needed here the most. And we can always use the drones if we start to leak spiders in another spot. Call early. I think we're good. So this is super interesting. All we're getting is our spiders, and spiders are very resistant to magic. So it's making me want to build all of these... All of these physical damage towers. So here comes a new enemy. Corpses animated by dark magic shadow spawn. Uh, with only one order in their minds, destroy. So they're slow. What are they resistant to? Nothing. Okay, they don't look that slow. They're booking it at a pretty good pace there. So like right now, I kind of just want to get a bunch of arcane archers. Because they're very effective uh, against these kind of like medium strength units here. Let's nuke them before they get a little bit out of control. We have another new enemy, a devourer. These servants of Godieth have an insatiable hunger. They devour everything in its path. Fast, low armor, and they consume soldiers. They also have 700 HP. like this seems to be working all right screecher bats new enemies bats with a paralyzing screech that even the mightiest troops can't stand so they stun so this map is really like anti barracks Let's make sure we're in the right spot. And I think we have enough, you know, in terms of our range to be able to kill them. I'm watching this position up here. I think we're going to nuke these. They have 700 HP and they're pretty strong. sit Wilbur right in the middle and he can hit both lanes. That's probably the most effective strategy. will almost certainly just be another you know it could be a great golden longbow position it seems to be able to hit all three waves or lanes rather so that might just be what we need to do with it and another new enemy so a dark spitter corrupted creatures who spit dark blood their precision is lethal so average speed and dark spit I wonder if their spit like turns my soldiers into you know little corpses. That would be pretty bad. And we can move forward a bit with Wilbur here. Certainly do not want to doubt the lethality of the Dark Spit. It's doing a ton of damage to Wilbur. Oh. 
and they have a thousand HP and medium armor. So I'm happy that I built at least a few of these magic towers, and they're also going to help um, by teleporting. You know, upgrading this tower is fine and everything, but we should be upgrading these two. These two can each hit multiple lanes. And that's where we're going to really get our value from. We're reinforcing here. Our hero is here, so we're going to upgrade here. It's kind of the thought. I think we'll be able to stop this. Let's just preemptively drop our drones, get some damage on them. Kill the bats. Where are we leaking? Oh, Wilbur got taken down by the spit. That's pretty bad. Our lightning's almost off cooldown. That should save us here. Come on, Wilbur. We'll upgrade them real quick just to make sure they don't uh, leak. Alright, that was a close one. Letting Wilbur get sniped here by the super high damage of these dark spitters uh, was not cool. And we really want to start getting some time lapses, some some burst arrows. We need a little bit of more, a little bit more AOE, I think. Double time lapse. That'll be very good for locking these dudes out. We can get another one up here. Those rockets from Wilbur are great. They behave just like the uh, the rockets from uh, Kingdom Rush Frontiers. Get a bear, place him here, and nuke this top area. There we go. I think now we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling, but we're on wave 15 of 15, so <laughs> I think that's kind of the end of the rolling. All right, let's put let's put Wilbur in the center lane here. There's no one to hit him in the air. Are we going to leak one right at the end? That would be pretty awful. The drones will fly all over, so we don't have to worry about like putting them in a bad spot. Kind of the best part about them. Don't disappear, guys. No, they disappear. Okay, we're still going to get three stars, but that insult to injury we leaked right at the end. Okay. Not bad. I think we only have one more level, though. Pardon me, I had a bit of a sneeze there. And I think it's very fitting to use a dwarven character in these dwarven levels. Do we have any other dwarf characters? No. Okay. Well, let's try it out. It's the Tainted Pit. Is this the last level? It might be. So, General, the once proud and powerful dwarves have been exterminated by a powerful demon released by mistake. We must avenge our former allies and defeat Godia the Infernal. 
before he reaches the surface and unleashes a reign of terror. To battle. One second, guys. I'm going to blow my nose real quick. It's the last thing anybody wants to hear. Okay, so we get a Lord Bulwark. Me should be left alone. Last of the vile berserks. Time to meet the berserker. I'm not a giant. I am a pearl. Bears like me should be left alone. Interesting. So, Welcome to the danger zone. To me, he reminds me of uh, what's his name? Is it Bjorn from The Hobbit? Uh, the last of the the kind of shape shifting uh, bear men. But he also reminds me of if you ever played um, uh, the Red Banner Saga. He says he's a Vrall. Last of the Vrall Berserkers. I didn't... And I played like halfway through the first Red ban uh, Banner Saga. And I think I put it down for some reason. Um, but I think he might be one of those type of characters. But his name is Bulwark. He has huge HP pool. Um, good damage. Um, but no armor. So pretty squishy character there. We have three exits once again. Very difficult to defend. But as of right now, we only have two entrances. So we can defend two entrances pretty handily, I think. This looks like a pretty clutch uh, stone circle position. And where are we going to put our barracks is the key. We want a barracks here if we can, um, but if not, that is okay. So like this screams barracks, this screams barracks, so does this. Or golden longbow. Trying to maximize the efficiency, as always. This would probably just make another great stone circle position. Maybe something like this, perhaps. Yeah, it's a little iffy. Don't know how much I like that. Because I'm looking at it like this. And I don't really believe in this current uh, configuration all that much. It might work. The, the last level I felt like it was trying to teach me not to rely on barracks that much. It's kind of what you know the game was trying to, to do. And I feel like Bulwark is one of those types of heroes that needs to stand in and amongst uh, barracks units or else he's going to get wrecked. Hunting season begins. Hmm. By the light of the moon, to the vanguard. All right, let's try it. We haven't lost anything yet. And Wilbur is just going to do a ridiculous amount of damage to them before this even gets started. Let's see what he can do. Okay, he has some kind of roar. Let's unleash our drones, that way we get the cooldown. I want to kind of pull this back just a little bit, that way we make sure this guy's in range. He's getting messed up. Pull him back. Let him heal, and then we can bring him back in. Oh, what the heck? So fire is targeting our ground forces. Coming out of the lava. Okay. Once again, it's just another case of don't use barracks units. And I do. Kind of just part of my playstyle. But let's not focus on upgrading them at all. 
think that would be a pretty big mistake. And you know what, we're gonna lightning here. Drop the drones as soon as we get them. And let them do a ridiculous amount of damage. Having him on the ground tanking and doing damage for us is pretty awesome. Oh, run. Ah, uh, clumsy. So I think what we're going to do here is upgrade that, and then we'll end up upgrading this just so it can overlap. Of course, while I'm doing that, I'll let Wilbur get killed. That sucks. So let's get one Weirwood. So we have a Shadow Champion now. They are the Sons of Godieth. Their power infuses fear and even the bravest of soldiers, high armor, and blood pact. So I'm not sure what blood pact does, but having high armor is pretty terrifying. Um, we need to make sure that we have enough magic damage to deal with them. And right now, we kind of just don't. Good teleportation there. That felt good. And I'm doubting pretty terribly that we'll be able to, like, let's say we make this a longbow. I don't think we'll be able to one-shot these things. Uh, we can crit them, no doubt, uh, but not one-shot them. And if this is on mobile, I'd be able to very easily micro. I'm just a little bit clumsier on keyboard, I would say. And I would like to get another High Elven Mage. We'll get this, not only for its great damage, but because it lowers the magic resistance of some of these units. Alright. So anytime we get a chance, we basically want to lightning those things. And let's get one bit of clobber there. We may even want to try and get the fiery nut, but I think before we do that, we should upgrade this. And then maybe look to get an arch druid there. So 2800 HP, high armor, and 64 to 96 damage. That's a, that's a pretty st uh, standard scary amount. That's what I was trying to say. Is there anything cool to click on in this map? I don't think so. Alright, let's nuke them. This is getting pretty scary right here. We'll get those upgrades. And it's one thing to let the uh, the Berserker guy die, it's a whole other thing to let Wilbur die. Wilbur's DPS output is just enormous. And we really don't want to let him die. And we're going to get one level of the Sylvan Curse. No, let's back him up too. Just because we can let him die doesn't mean we should. Second bear. Feels good. And we'll put our giant berserker in and amongst the bears. Let's get the fiery nut as well. That sounds funny to say. You can also get some AoE there on our arcane archers. And let's get one level of time lapse too. So we're kind of diversifying our damage in this in this frontal area sleep would also not be bad so would the uh, the arcane sentinel would be fine I don't want to go too hard into that though at this point I'm kind of looking at my defensive boys.
thinking something like that would be fine. So Wilbur went down, but it's not a big deal. I think we've got this particular map under control. It's just these dang dark spitters. I need to set them a little bit further back. Probably also getting hit, I guess, by the uh, the molten magma coming out of the the fiery lake there. Yeah. The game's trying to overwhelm us right now. I think we're actually fine against that. I think we just plane have enough clear. I want to get that off before I pop my next uh, calling early. And we'll see if this ends up being a boss map, which I think it is. Uh, we'll see if we have the tools, if we built correctly. good get a level two clobber clobber is one of those things you can easily get it to level three um, just because a three second stun on a lot of units is pretty ridiculously powerful i kind of want to sell these and turn them into a longbow I think I will. Could have been really doing a lot of damage this whole time. And we'll give him an upgrade. So, I mean, we have all three lanes covered. A little bit of protection, a little bit of uh, anti-air. For the most part, we pretty heavily front-loaded this, which is also what this is allowing us to do. Let's drop our drones and then call the wave early. burst arrow. I think we certainly want to use our lightning on these guys. They just have so much resistance. We're holding for now. Get the upgrades here. We just don't want to lose Wilbur. So let's pull him back. And if there's a boss coming, we'll probably be happy to have Hunter's Mark. Amplifying damage for us. So here we go. I think it's fair to say this guy is a boss. Godiev. Um, we can definitely micro them out of the way. 15,000 HP, 200 to 250 damage. Oh, that's not good. That's pretty bad. Wow, he turned them into... 
those little butts. So we do need to micro away. Alright, I managed to have enough micro ability to get them out of the way, but not these guys. But if we upgrade them at kind of the last second, we'll have defenders. We've almost got our lightning off cooldown. He's almost dead. Almost. There we go. And we did it. The pick of destiny. Defeat Godia, the dark Balrog. Nice tenacious D reference. I like it. Alright, we did it. So, didn't do exactly what I planned to do today, which was to knock out the Duskwood Outpost, but we did knock out uh, Dwarman Gates and the Tainted Pit. So, you know, <laughs> that was fun. I had a good time doing that. Um, we could always go back and do some of the Heroic Mode Challenges and Iron Mode Challenges, and for these as well. Uh, I think we only have three levels left to do here. I don't know if this is a level. I honestly don't remember. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Uh, but... Uh, actually, I'm super curious. I wonder if we beat all the levels that this opens up or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett, and my channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you enjoyed today's video. You know, it was like 25 minutes of me failing, followed up with 35 minutes of me succeeding. So, that's a pretty good ratio. That's probably my, my ratio in life as well so <laughs> two step forward one step back is kind of kind of where i'm at anyway y'all thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next one take care